Let's take a look at the tensor charts here real quick, since we're not gandering at anything seriously yet. Look at that. We got a lot of open space here. You know, I'm just gonna full screen this. See if that looks any better on stream. It's a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna go over this and just in case you guys don't know what tensor charts are, essentially what it is is, is order book data combined with uh, price action uh, right all on the chart. So a heat map signifies depending on the color the um let me just read the example here or the explanation order book historical snapshots the brighter the color the larger volume of pending orders toggle precision with the b key um so all right we've got price movement here right and this is uh bitmex bitcoin perpetual and this blue here are orders that were in the order book um, for buys. If they're below it, it's for buys most likely. And then um, if it's above it, it's for sells. So you can see here, we kind of got a little resistance going up at 82.74, 82.70s, somewhere in there. So if we were to pop, we would have to, we'd probably break through because it's a, a light amount, you can tell by the color. Um, but here, if we go down, we're gonna hit a lot of resistance um going down and this is actually way more than uh than i would expect for our our assumed downward movement here so and i don't like how this chart that goes away when you zoom zoom out too much you have to zoom in really far in order to see it so reading this chart i would say Getting down below, what, 77 is going to be difficult. There's going to be a, a ton of selling that needs to happen in order to break all of this volume. Like we've got one yellow, this is kind of yellow-orangish. We've got a purplish-red, which is about in the middle. You know, yellowish is high again, high, and then we've still got all of this blue in here too. So the likelihood, according to the order book, and this can change, um, by the minute, um, you know, we, it doesn't look, it doesn't look promising for going past, um, 7441 unless, unless the selling is just backed by a ton of, of volume. So I would safe to assume that we would get at least a significant bounce around this area, um, or at least come back to where we were at the minimum bare minimum. So the reason why I like looking at these charts is, is it gives you a kind of a better picture of where we could go. You know, if a lot of people are looking at these ranges as buy points, um, either to go long or to take profit from a short or flippity do, um, where you are in a short and then you switch into a long, you take your profit, switch into a long and then go long the other direction. Um, this this looks like a lot of people are paying attention to this area and when other people are paying attention to the area you know if one person says something question it but if multiple people start saying things you might want to take it into consideration um and this is where my data of uh, i don't know how how much lower uh we would go unless there is just the backing here but look these numbers are huge we got millions like 12 13 million dollars here right uh ignorant billy <clears throat> if you look at the top left um of the screen it'll show right now he's looking at big bitmix uh xbt usd and i think that's the perpetual contract yep 
It doesn't say perpetual, but I would. It's safe to assume that probably. That's um, I also like looking at Phoenix. Phoenix is kind of the leader in in movement. Uh, sometimes, or can be. And what does Phoenix say about those areas? Not as strong. But they also don't have the volume that Bitmex does. So that makes sense. But they're saying those areas are definitely being taken into consideration also. And they're a little 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 lower than middle. Um, and we can actually see the numbers if we zoom in here. I don't really like that you have to zoom in. I wish you could like click on them or hover over them and it would tell you. Um and I want to say this is in Bitcoin. This is not in dollar. So this level here, there's 154 Bitcoin wall, essentially, that it needs to eat through in order to go down farther. We got 100 Bitcoin. Uh, I can't even read that one. 196, 159, 192. Um, so yeah, that's why the heat map looks different is because it's in Bitcoin, not in dollars. The other one's in dollars, so it's multiplied, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not seeing... I'm just not seeing anything that can break that yet. Let's see, Bitstamp, Bitcoin USD. We don't really look at these too much. Other, other locations, I just want to compare them. Nope, same area. A little bit lower, actually, on Bitstamp. But I don't know what the volatility is like on Bitstamp, so. And GDAX. Yep. Same range for GDAX, too. GDAX is in Bitcoin also. So we're going to see this resistance here. 100 Bitcoin is not a whole lot, though. So if we chew through this, then... No, that could happen. That could definitely be a possibility going down to uh, lower. That thing's so cool. 79 doesn't have a whole lot here. So this could be a possibility. Let's do this. Bitfinex. Bitmix. GDAX. Vivade, I got to get ready. I got to do some work stuff here. It's kind of my day off, but I still have to go to work for a couple hours. But uh, yep. I'm going to get ready. And you guys in here in Twitch, thank you for being a part of this community. And hope you all do well. Take care, man. Oh, real quick. Uh, Leo Jacques. Um, here, I'll do that for you. Is that it? Is it? uh there it is yeah go to that that link there and uh, watch it there's like a 10 minute video and that's where you can learn about ttm squeeze no problem man you have a wonderful day one point two mil on the buy followed by a whole bunch of cells about the same amount that'd be a slap in the face So yeah, that's uh, the tensor charts.